I'm Daniel Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services on the management of waste and on the transportation of hazardous materials. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on one particular regulation of the US EPA that allows a small quantity generator of hazardous waste to episodically generate more hazardous waste and comply with a lower level of regulation while doing so. So this is part of or what's known as the episodic generation of hazardous waste at a small quantity generator. Okay, couple explanations and disclaimers before we get into this. First off, once again, very brief video of some very complicated regulations. I've explained these regulations much more in depth in an article that's on my blog. So I'll have a link to that article in the description to this video. And I encourage you to go there and read that article. Uh, also, a disclaimer, these regulations may change over time. Now, I don't expect this regulation to change anytime soon. This was part of a whole group of regulations, the Generator Improvements Rule, that went into effect on May 30th of 2017. So I don't expect it to be changing at the federal level anytime too soon, but this video and the information in it is up to date as of that date, May 30th, 2017. Uh, disclaimer number two, states with an authorized hazardous waste program do not need to adopt this entire federal rule, so they may not adopt it at all. Or if they do adopt it, they may choose to adopt more strict uh, requirements in this rule. Uh, also, some states already have an episodic generation uh, regulation that has already been approved by the EPA, and they may keep that instead of adopting this federal rule. So you must check with your state to confirm compliance. And fin my, finally, disclaimer number three, the big one is that in the end, you as the generator of a hazardous waste are responsible for its cradle to grave management. So don't rely entirely on what you see in this video or what you read in my article. You have to do your own research. Um, contact your state environmental representative. Uh, contact me if you have any questions. Contact the federal US EPA. Research the regulations yourself to make sure you are fully in compliance with these regulations. Okay, so with that aside, now the scope and the applicability of this. And, and really, the, the, the whole thing, the way this regulation would work is, or the way it, it would apply is, let's say you are a small quantity generator of hazardous waste. And let's just say you're cranking one of these out of hazardous waste, maybe every day, right? Maybe every day, a couple days or so, you're cranking out a couple gallons or more. Enough that you are a small quantity generator Hazard of hazardous waste. But then something happens. Something happens where maybe you generate more hazardous waste. So maybe you have a spill or some unplanned event, or maybe your production increases and you generate more hazardous waste, in which case in the past you would have had to have become a large quantity generator. Well, under the new rule, you don't have to become a large quantity generator of hazardous waste. You can maintain your status as a small quantity generator if you comply with these regulations that I'm going to show you. So these regs apply solely to a small quantity generator. There is a, an allowance for episodic generation at a very small quantity generator, and that will be addressed in a different video. Okay? Um, these Episodic events, as I already alluded to, may be planned or they may be unplanned. That matters, okay? And that, that is a part of the scope and applicability of these regs. Okay, so, and again, the whole idea is that if you comply with these relatively simple regulations, uh, then you can maintain your status as a small quantity generator even while you're generating large amounts of hazardous waste. Okay, so what is it that you're required as a small quantity generator during one of these episodic events? 
First off, you are limited to one episodic event per year. That event may be planned or unplanned. Okay. However, you may petition for a second episodic event in the same year. So you get the first one, you got to ask for the second one. Okay. So you may get the second event. And here's one thing that, that bears further research is that the two events can't be the same. If the first one is planned, the second one has to be unplanned. If the first one is unplanned, the second one you petition for has to be planned. Okay, so you get two events if you ask for the second one and if it's not the same as the first. All right. Um, the small quantity generator has to notify the US EPA 30 days prior to a planned event. Or the SQG has to notify the US EPA within 72 hours of an unplanned event. So planned, 30 days before. Make sure you're all set up and ready to go. Unplanned, within 72 hours, three days of it starting, make sure you've notified the EPA. And then you have 60 calendar days to complete the event. That means all the hazardous waste off-site within that 60 calendar days. The hazardous waste, from the episodic event can be accumulated in either a container or a tank. Okay, both of those are allowed for your hazardous waste. Um, and the management, the on-site management of the hazardous waste is almost the same as all your other hazardous waste as a small quantity generator. You stay within the regulations of the small quantity generator with a few additions. Okay, so let's see what those are. Number one, you have to mark or label the container as episodic hazardous waste. So this label will not do, right? What you have to do is have one like that. So you must have episodic hazardous waste marked on the container somehow. And that one right there, that would suffice, okay? So you have that. You do have to have some indication of the hazards of the hazardous waste. So this one happens to be a flammable liquid. I've got the DOT flammable liquid hazmat label on there. That does the job there to indicate the hazards. And then you need the date the episodic event began. So it's not the date that the first hazardous waste went in the container like it normally is. You have to have the date that the episodic event began, all right? And then you have to maintain records of the episodic event as it occurs, the waste you generated, when it was shipped off site, where it went, all of that, of course, and keep records for at least three years, all right? But that's it. Other than that, you simply comply with your status as a small quantity generator. You don't, and this is key, you don't have to comply with the requirements of a large quantity generator. You don't have to notify the feds of the change in your status and do all the reporting and fees and training and everything else that goes along with being a large quantity generator just because you have these one or possibly two episodic events in the same year. Okay, and oh, and yeah, that's it. So that's everything. So uh, now, again, there's much, much more information in my article, in my blog. I'll have a link to that in the description. Be sure to check that out if this is something you're interested in. Um, do your own research into the federal and then your state regulations. And please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much.